Again, I'm Doug McGuire. And uh, if you need to reach out to me, certainly send me an email or give me a ring. Happy to talk to you. Okay. Our portfolio across data and AI encompasses file and object. We have the IBM Storage Scale, Storage Ceph, we just brought into our lineup from Red Hat. And then our acquisition from years, a couple years back, IBM Cloud Object Storage used to be known as CleverSafe for the really massively scalable object storage platforms. Some hardware offerings that complement those offerings. Arvin summed it up really well for us in 21, and we kind of took this as a mandate across our portfolio because customers are going to really have to unlock the value of their data. They're going to use AI to do that, but the biggest problem that resides out there is where that data is. It's everywhere right now, and getting a hold of that is the number one problem to unlocking that. You can see some of the client challenges, right? Floating data capacity, it's been going on forever, right? No news there. Storage costs keep going up because we have to keep buying more. Cyber resiliency is at the heart of things right now. Customers really concerned, not just about protecting, but recovery. Ransomware you know, threats, they gotta be able to recover. And in the unstructured space, it's just as vital as the block storage space. Block storage is where we run our ERP systems, our banking systems, right? Everything that has a system of record where we keep the coins and dollars. Unstructured is where we keep our intellectual capital, where our engineering happens, new product design, analytics, sometimes customer information, real deep analysis, could be AI stuff that we're doing on digital twin, supply chain modeling, important stuff. It could be that next generation of innovation that we're gonna launch as a customer is gonna launch six months from now, nine months from now. If that goes away, you may have your, your, your dollars and cents, but you may not have your next generation product and you may fall behind, right? So it's just as vital. Compliance and regulatory, no need to talk about that with the banking situation we got. And then efficient use of the cloud. This has become very interesting. A lot of customers talking about repatriation of cloud, bringing it back onto on-prem or making it more useful. How do I burst the cloud, get my data there and shut it down? How do I make the most economies of scale? And of course, the biggest challenge is the, the data growth. They just keep ordering more, ordering more of the same point solution, same siloed solutions, and keep placing them in place. Why? Because it's coming in so fast, they don't have time to react. They've really got to take a pause and figure out a new way of going about this. And the number one problem, managing. How do you manage it? How do you curate it? How do you tier it? How do you make the most sustainable architecture? So with that, what I'm going to talk to you about today start things off are about real deployments across our clients, how they're making a difference, how they're saving money, how they're advancing their technology platforms, right? I'm not gonna show use cases and samples and examples that how it might be used. I'm gonna show you how customers are using it. We've got some, what I'll call architecture in here, very simple diagrams, but I'll give you the point of what we're, we're talking about. So first and foremost, Global data platform, client success, this is across uh, AI and ML and uh, HPC type of workload. One of the key things I found in this, this one was attracting top researchers. Why? Because of the collaboration component. Researchers working in silos can't collaborate. The data is stuck, right? This saved them millions, as you can see, right? By having the better way of sharing data, setting up two sites that can talk together, cache data across, two platforms, right? They've also got an online archiving solution with tape. Fundamental value prop there with tiering. What do I do with that data that I'm not using today? How do I get a more sustainable approach to that? Tape is a key ingredient a lot of our customers are tapping into. Why? Because of the volumes of data, the cost of data. How do I reduce my, co my cost and my footprint? Easy, tier to tape or tier to object storage, some other platform that may be lower cost and uh, implement that. That's one, and these are not small. That was 130 petabyte deployment, right? This one's another one, $100 million savings is what they chalked it up to be. Save them from going to the public cloud. They had thought they were gonna go to the public cloud, put everything up there and, and, and move everything there. Instead, what they did was they put up two hot uh, sites with a stretch cluster between the two, right? So they're able to share this data, have active, active architecture again, right? 50 petabytes of data being stored there. 
again, huge amount of, of savings for them by avoiding the cost avoidance of going to the cloud. Next one, this one is a, a real good one for the sustainability. So they've used tape, right? They've created a sustainable solution using the global data platform. Of course, you can see growing by 100 uh, terabytes per month to now 1.5 petabytes per month. The real key in this picture here though, that little switch on the right-hand side. Why? They can take it offline. You can power that data down. If, if the analysts are correct with 80% of unstructured data is stale, right? Why not turn it off? Why not take it offline? Have it available, have it curated, have it cataloged. You know where it's at, but put it offline. Saves you tons of money. Okay, here's another one. Multinational bank, right? So we're not just talking about scientific, university. No, this is a multinational bank. So, you know, our roots with GPFS were in high performance computing, right? Everybody's familiar with that. The scientific realm, technical computing realm. Still exists today. Still flourishes today. Big market for us. Why? Because we have performance and scalability. Two key elements for that space. But we've wrapped it with a lot of innovation. We've got a phenomenal product management and development team that have been driving this. Not from a we'll build it and then we'll come scenario. From customer requirements. From our user group. From our in involvement with our customers directly. What's next, right? So we've evolved that platform. So now multinational banks are deploying it. Making a difference. Again, multiple use cases. That's where it really shines. Is when you have multiple workloads. You're not just doing this for a workload, a siloed workload, or an island of technology. No, you're building it across your enterprise. You're putting that common data plane across the entire enterprise, surrounded by the data management services, surrounded by the lifecycle management, automating, tiering, all the good stuff you need, right, to drive cost out and more efficient use of data. Another one, this one is um, now working with modernization, right? So now we're building in also the capability of modern, modern uh, workloads like- Doug, what exactly is the global data platform? Is uh, it scale? Is it cost? So, is it yes, so it's, is it so the global data platform, Matt's gonna cover in depth, but it's, a, it's an architecture, right? It's a foundation and, it's, and our, our building block has been, or the centerpiece of it has been IBM Storage Scale. That's where it evolved out of. Customer of ours started implementing it that way back in 2018. They built this thing. They became a tremendous reference for us. And we've adopted it and, and taken it to new heights. Um, but they, uh, that's, that's where we came out with the global data platform was all about what is it doing for those customers? It's not just providing a high performance file system. It's now multi-protocol as well. So calling it just a filer isn't a good name, right? Calling it a high performance file system isn't a good name. So global data platform really resonates with what we deliver today. And Matt, as I mentioned before, will we'll bring you all through that. It's a, a collection of data services that he'll show you. Um, so now, yeah, bringing in new uh, workloads, right? Including GDS capability, right? With uh, NVIDIA and then uh, Red Hat OpenShift. So modernization using that hybrid cloud. Dave will bring you through our, our focus around fusion and how that ties into uh, modernization. And then you wanna go further with uh, NVIDIA and SuperPod, right? This is again, another customer example, reduced their training time. Now 70% improvement on AI training time might be like, okay, what does that mean? Well, what it really means to me is productivity. Productivity to the data scientists. The sooner I can get a result back if I'm a data scientist, the sooner I can go make the next model. That's what AI is all about, right? It's about revisions and regression testing. And, and as soon as you get those results, you can do the changes, keep moving it. Um, and this one was for a, you know, a large automotive parts manufacturer. Formal uh, reference out on our website. 70% improvement over what? Over their existing platform. Yeah. Yeah. So they were running into a, you know, they had deployed some NAS environment. NAS is a, you know, a very common filer out there, right? 
just good enough for lots of things. Maybe not so good enough for, uh, for this type of environment. And what's one of the key things that the global data platform can do for our customers is when we bring this value, we can help them with extending those platforms, giving life to existing platforms by pulling that data in and giving it a modern capability. So as you look at this, um, you know, we solve data challenges. And that's what we're after. We're all about solving problems. Whether it's performance, retrieving data faster, ingesting it faster, improved collaboration. Collaboration is huge. The more you can do, we have a customer that works engineering 24-7. Follow the sun strategy, moving that data, right? That optimizes labor costs. Labor is probably the biggest cost in all of this, right? You got some really smart people, they're expensive. You want them to be as productive as possible. You don't want them running fine commands, looking for data, looking for where the latest copy is. Reduction of silos is huge from an infrastructure perspective. Some simple operations, we've got a great uh, GUI. Chris will be showing a little bit of a demo. Um, optimized costs, paramount, and reducing risk is paramount. So we've built in some of our safeguarded copy capability into this platform for recovery not just about protection, we got encryption and all that stuff, but we've got recovery. Hours, not days and weeks. That's paramount. If you're interested in more information, got some QR codes here, some links. Again, Doug McGuire at IBM, uh, title slide has my contact information should you need to get hold of me.